Saturday, of course, is the Full Gear Show, and we have a full lineup of a lot of matches, including... Ten, ten, ten match show. Ten match show. We got the buy-in with Nyla Rose and Jamie Hayter versus Hikaru Shida and Thunder Rosa. I think that's just a way to... Because they, um, they don't have a lot of uh, women stuff on the show, so it's kind of like a... Kind of just a match thrown there. It wasn't like it was built up or anything, but, um, you know, I mean... Uh, should be should be decent decent to good. And they also added today Cody and Pac versus Andrade and Malachi Black. Yeah, we've known that one though for weeks. Because um, I mean, I remember um, um, this was not originally on the card. Originally, I think they were going to do a four way with those four, and then uh, Tony Khan decided to make it into a to do a tag team program. Um, you know, which would have been when they did the first. We've been right when they did the first angle. So um, when you look, the thing is, uh, you know, I looked at this card, and up until tonight, I really didn't think that the card had been promoted hard. But, you know, you know, uh, I think one thing that the UFC taught us is that, you know, you've got to, the, the key is the last week. So they, you know, them and WWE, it's like they've kind of back off, you know, the idea of, you know, several week promotion and really, you know, I mean, they promoted a lot of the matches a little bit, but it really went hard tonight. And actually, I thought tonight they did a great job with this. But when you look at the lineup from start to finish, um, match quality wise, like like I, you know, I don't, you know, as far as like this isn't going to do numbers like the last pay per view did. Um, I don't know what kind of numbers it'll do. November has been traditionally the hardest month they've had to to draw. Uh, you know, I mean, um, Omega and Page is a match that has been in in its own way promoted from, you know, almost the beginning of the company. Um, you know, I mean, as far as Page winning the championship from the beginning of the company, from the um, the first press conference in January in uh, January 2019 in Jacksonville, Adam Page came out and and the big thing was he was going to win the title, and we all knew. You know, the big thing that they were going to build to in a couple of years was the coronation of Adam Page's champion. That was always the plan. Um, and this is the culmination of that, the whole Adam Page breaking up from the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and sort of going heel and then him and Omega winning the tag team titles but being the champions that, you know, you knew that they were going to do the big, they were going to break up. And eventually, they were going to do the big match. And they, in fact, did the first big match that Omega won. And then Omega won the championship. And then Paige, you know, challenged. And, of course, the big match was supposed to be at All Out in September. And it wasn't because uh, Paige's wife was giving birth around that time. So they moved it to the show. And here we are. Um, but when you look at this lineup, um, as far as just the match quality... It's like, I'm not saying like every match looks to be like a, a, a fantastic match, but you really look at like match by match, um, every match, you know, I mean, the uh, the Britt Baker and Ty Conte match should be good, but every other match I think on this show should be great because you look at like, again, starting with that tag match, um, with uh, you got Pac in there who's just been on fire and had, had a great, great match tonight. Um, you have um, Andrade, who, you know, Andrade and Pac had one of the best matches in the history of the company just a couple weeks ago. Um, and Cody and Malachi Black have always had good matches, great matches. The last the last one was great. So, I mean, on paper, you know, put those guys in a pay-per-view. And I expect this tag match. I expect this tag match to be great, not good. Just, you know, absolutely great. We got the Minneapolis Street Fight Inner Circle versus American Top Team. We got Adam Cole and the Young Bucks versus hold Jurassic. On, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's going to be interesting because you got Andre Arlovsky's first match. Um, you know, Junior Dos Santos, we know, will be okay, you know, most likely because he picked it up like nothing. Um, Dan Lambert's only going to do, you know, a couple spots, you know, the old manager spot where you. You know, where Jericho's in and he's down, and he tags in, he's stomping him and things like that. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, it's amazing. This is Dan Lambert's first match. 
and Dan Lambert is one of the biggest wrestling fans in existence. You know, I mean, he's got the, I think he's got the best collection of championship belts in the world. Um, and, you know, just big, big, gigantic, gigantic fan. Um, but, I mean, street fight-wise and everything like that, um, you know, it it still should be good. You got, you know, the whole Jericho team is a great, you know, great team. So, um, you know, it'll be, they'll have the leeway, they'll do all kinds of stuff. They have to do a completely different match from everybody else on the show. And I'm calling the Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express and Christian Cage. Yes, it's uh, False Count Anywhere. And, um, you know, the Young Bucks always have fantastic matches on pay-per-views. Uh, they have not missed. I cannot imagine this one missing. Um, they've already talked about um, giving Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus the first five-star match of their careers. Because um, when Did you see the thing when Nick got hurt? No. Okay, so Nick hurt his heel um, last week and at first was feared that he may have broken his foot, in which case he would have missed the match. But he got checked out and he's okay. But he was saying that, like, uh, if I'm out, there goes their first five-star match of their careers. And Matt goes, like, uh, like I'll, I'm still in it. And Nick was just like, they're not going to a five-star match if I'm not in it. So... Anyway, they already talked about that. I don't know if they will, but, um, I mean, the Young Bucks against, you know, just in, in the regular tags with Luchasaurus and uh, Penta for, te I mean, uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy for television, their matches have always been great anyway. I mean, they're, you know, so uh, throw in the fact that they're, the one thing, the one thing that may be tougher is that with so many matches on the show that, um, they may not get like the 20 plus minutes like they got in a lot of their pay-per-view matches. Um, they may get 15, but they should still be able to tear it up, especially Falls kind of anywhere. It'd probably be creative as hell. So um, it it should be, it should battle for match, match of the night. And, um, you know, and that's a pretty high standard given what this lineup has. Sam Punk and Eddie Kingston. Yeah, so they're, they, they're going to have to have a great brawl. They have to, given the buildup. Um, and it's Eddie Kingston's, um, in some ways, it's his biggest match of his career. In, in other ways, he kind of said that it's, you know, the match that he had with Moxley, because it was a championship match, was the biggest match of his career. Um, and you don't want to disrespect the title. But other than that, he considers this is his biggest match of his career. MJF and Darby Allen. Well, they should have a great match. Um, Darby Allen's always, you know, great on pay per view, and and MJF, and they're going to get time, and they're going to be featured, and probably going to have a lot of interference. Wardlow, Sting, you know, the whole bit. Um, so, uh, but yeah, probably a good presentation there. Miro and Brian Danielson, the finals of the Eliminator Tournament. You know, Daniel Bryan is kind of like you wind him up and and. And he's given you a, a four-star match every time out. So I'm sure that this match will be probably the best singles match of Miro's career, if not close to it. We've got the Luch Brothers versus FTR for the AW Tag Team titles. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is going to be interesting because, uh, you know, obviously Pentagon and Phoenix are fantastic. The last match that they had with... with um, the Young Bucks is going to be, you know, almost for sure high up in the balloting for match of the year. Probably the best American match of the year. Um, and FTR is, you know, a great, great team. But in the past when this match has happened, um, it has not gelled perfectly. So that was, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, individually, um, you know, all four of these guys are fantastic, but... Uh, We'll see if the little bit of holes get shorn, so to speak, shorn up. We've got Britt Baker, Ty Conti for the women's title. Yeah, um, they should be fine, but uh, um, you know, it's it, it, given the lineup, um, 
I mean, they're definitely going to work hard to keep up with. They're going to have to work hard to keep up with the rest of this card, though. And as noted, the main event, Kenny Omega, Hangman Page for the AW World title. And that's the show. Yeah. Um, the match they had a year ago was fantastic. This is a bigger match. Um, I think Omega's healthier. Um, it is the biggest match of Page's life. And... Um, you know, yeah. I mean, I think that they're out there to do match of the year. Um, so, you know, I mean, they could slip. Somebody could get hurt. But if that doesn't happen, um, I expect a absolute killer match. You know, and um, I would expect Paige to win. You know, I think that he's the favorite to win. Um, Storyline-wise, it's just hard for me to envision this match going any other way. I mean, there was, I had some ideas of ways for Omega to win, but all of those are now kind of obsolete. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's the climax of the big storyline, and it better be great. <laughs> That's all I can say. So, um, yeah, I mean, it should be a classic pay-per-view. I mean, um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how it will draw, but, I mean, as far as the quality of the show itself... Um, I mean, it, it it should be right up there. I think the last one was probably the best one they did. But, man, that's, you know, the one thing, they do great big shows. I mean, the, the what was it, Double or Nothing, the first Double or Nothing show in Vegas was fantastic. And, you know, the so many of the other, you know, many of the others, the one with the, the, the original um, Stadium Stampede show was fantastic. And, um, you know, so... Uh, but this lineup is so strong, start you know, start to finish. I mean, as far as pure match quality, um, you know, we could legitimately have in in ten matches, we could legitimately have eight four star matches with no stre- without a stretch, which is almost unheard of. Hey Brian, you remember the story where Canyon called you from the locker room and asked you if somebody was Fritz past? Yes, yeah, Fritz. Canyon calls me and he goes. Alvarez, he always called me Alvarez. Alvarez, I, I'm having an argument right here. Fritz von Eric, alive or dead? And I said, I hope you get your money. It is not on speakerphone, he was just on his. And I said, I hope you get your money, but uh, he's dead. And there's a pause, and then I hear, I told you he was alive! And he hung up. <laughs> If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.